Hi everyone. Today we're gonna deal an important topic and an interesting topic that is stem cells in the orodental region. What are stem cells? Stem cells are special cells which are able to develop into different cell types. They are immature and specialized cells in the body that are able to grow into specialized cell types by a process called differentiation. In simple words, we can say an undifferentiated cell getting converted to a differentiated cell according to our need. So the type of stem cells involves embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. Embryonic stem cells originate from inner cell mass of blastocyst in a pre-implantation stage after in vitro fertilization. They can able to differentiate into most cell types from all three germ layers that is the ectoderm, endoderm and the mesoderm. With the help of this transcription factors, it can able to maintain in a pluripotent state. Whereas adult stem cells are otherwise known as somatic stem cells or postnatal stem cells. They reside in a place called stem cell neck which is a specialized micro environment that these stem cells can reside for a longer period and they are multipotent progenitor cells they are also capable of differentiating into many cell lineages of needs now moving to the types of adult stem cells that is one is hematopoietic and the other one is mesenchymal as the name suggests hematopoietic stem cells derive from the blood and mesenchymal stem cells derived from the bone marrow. Blood derived that is the hematopoietic stem cells will have growth factors and the signaling molecules they are responsible to enhance their function whereas in bone marrow derived that is mesenchymal stem cells they have a role in tissue regeneration during any stress or injury impacts. According to International Society of Cellular Therapy, there are few criteria for a mesenchymal stem cell. So, a mesenchymal stem cell should adhere to the plastic tissue culture plate. That is the first thing. It has to adhere to the tissue culture plate. Second, it should express certain markers like CD105, CD73 and CD90. As well as they should not express few factors like CD45, CD34, CD14, CD19 and HLA-DR. And the last being able to differentiate in vitro. These all are the proposed criteria to characterize a mesenchymal stem cell. There is something called induced pluripotent stem cells. They are nothing but genetic reprogramming of somatic cells by the forced expression of genetic factors and transcription factors. So they have a peculiar feature that is nothing but epigenetic memory which means that they can differentiate into donor cell lineage. So that is the speciality of induced pluripotent stem cells. Lots of research have been going through in this where more gene and transcriptant factors were incorporated into the uh, somatic cells to differentiate into donor cell lineage. Now moving to the stem cells in the oral cavity. Oral cavity have enormous amount of stem cell neck or stem cell population which can be utilized for various dental procedures. The first one being dental pulp stem cells, second from the periodontal ligament, third from the exfoliated deciduous teeth and fourth from the dental follicle or the apical papilla and the fifth one being bone marrow derived from the mesenchymal stem cells. So the first one being dental pulp stem cells which were derived from the dental pulp that is the cell rich zone or the perivascular neck okay. So this is the first type of dental stem cells they were obtained from the impacted third molar okay. They are isolated by enzymatic digestion of pulp tissue and it resembles fibroblast which is the most common cell present in the dental pulp. It has the higher proliferation rate even after extensive subculturing the proliferation rate of dental pulp cells remains little higher than the other stem cells from the other parts of the oral cavity. Now the research had been going on to develop an dentin pulp complex. So when it is cultured with different media it can able to form a dentin, bone, adipose tissue, muscle, chondroid bone and nerve. So it has a capability of being dentinogenic 
ऑस्टियोजेनिक एडिपोजेनिक मायोजेनिक कॉन्ड्रोजेनिक एंड न्यूरोजेनिक वी वॉट आर द यूजेस ऑफ डेंटल पल्प स्टेम सेल्स नॉट ओनली देंटल पल्प स्टेम सेल्स मोस्ट ऑफ द पल्प स्टेम सेल्स फ्रॉम द ओरल कैविटी शेयर द सेम यूजेस द फर्स्ट वन बींग डेंटल पल्प रीवास्कुलाइजेशन विच इज नथिंग बट द रूट कैनाल ट्रीटेड टूथ कैन बी रीवाइटलाइज विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ रीजनरेशन फ्रॉम द डेंटल पल्प स्टेम सेल्स द सेकेंड वन इज द रीजनरेशन ऑफ द पेराडोंटल लिगमेंट the third one is repair of craniofacial bone so it can be able to re replace or regenerate the entire periodontium in vivo and the alveolar ridge augmentation cell and organ models for studying this is very interesting because nowadays organoid culture had been of great interest that is the stem cells have been used to mimic the miniature of organs so that it will be easy for the further study of tissue engineering or any drug intervention can be studied in that miniature model then we can simulate the same with the normal organ bone formation during intra osseo integration of dental implants during dental implants if there is any bony uh, bony defect that can be covered with the help of these stem cells which has an ability to form bone during osseo integration of dental implant next is dental pulp of human exfoliated teeth that is the deciduous teeth or the root source of stem cells especially dental stem cells so they are obtained from exfoliating deciduous tooth and they also have a high proliferative index and high colony forming unit when we derive the stem cell from an exfoliated deciduous tooth it is always in clusters the later only it can be separated and then it can be cultured so it grow as individual cells only after separation and just like dental pulp stem cell these also resemble a fibroblast then comes the periodontal ligament stem cell as the name indicates it is derived from the periodontal ligament either from the extracted tooth or we can just scrape it from the alveolar bone surface so it has the potential to regenerate typical cementum and pedial like structures that is it can able to replace the deceased periodontium as it has the tendency to form a periodontium human pedial is also cryopreserved as i already said it is from derived from the two one is from the root surface of the extracted teeth or the other is from the alveolar bone surface when compared to the one which is derived from the extracted root surface the one from the alveolar bone surface have higher osteogenic potential because it has the high alp activity it has higher bone regeneration and higher proliferation index it also has a higher mineralization related markers whereas in the root surface area it has less alp and less mineralization related markers and hence it is less osteogenic when compared to the one which is created from the alveolar bone surface stem cells of apical papilla so it is isolated at certain specific stages of tooth development and it has a greater potential of dentin formation more than mature dental pulp it can have the ability to form more adult stem cells moving to the dental follicle progenitor cells which have an ability to cap capability to differentiate into cementoblast osteoblast and a fibroblast just like other stem cells of the oral cavity however it has a higher osteocalcin and it has faster bone regeneration because of that so when compared to dental follicle stem cell apical papilla stem cell also have the greater bone regeneration capacity orofacial bone marrow stem cells as the name detects it is derived from maxilla or mandible during surgical procedures of the oral cavity gene expression pattern is not affected by the donor age which is an important feature of an orofacial bone marrow stem cells it has a better quality for autologous bone grafting which has been following till now the unique features of bone marrow derived stem cell is it has higher quantity higher quality less chondrogenic and less adipogenic these were all were the interesting and the most important feature of an unique feature of an 
bone marrow derived stem cells whereas the disadvantages or the limitations we can say it is the available and collectible bone marrow volume is only 0.1 to 3 ml which is very minimal and absence of definitive in vivo markers and limited proliferation and differentiation potential when compared to other oral derived stem cells. Then there are stem cells which we can derive from the lining mucosa of the oral cavity that is either from the oral epithelium derived or from the gingival derived either from the oral epithelium or from the gingiva. Oral epithelial derived stem cells can form into an organized oral mucosa X Y O that is it is very or well organized and very complex structure hence it can be useful in the grafting procedures any gingivectomy or whatever the procedure involving the oral mucous membrane grafting can be done with the help of these type of stem cells and there are few in a, in a, uh, there are few stem cell nick that is cells from neural crest origin can be scattered in the oral mucosa and can they can reside in any stem cell nick in the oral cavity those cells can be identified can be derived and cultured and they have an osteogenic potential that is they have the capability of bone regeneration it was found very recently and it expressed high ALP and mineralization profile in the presence of BMP2 that is bone matrix protein 2. Gingival derived stem cells are very special because when they have been studied in an animal like rat in the colonitis case it can have the these gingival derived stem cells have the ability to minimize the inflammation ok. So, it is anti-inflammatory, immunosuppressive, immunomodulatory and the most important it is not tumorogenic. Stem cells from adipose tissue. Adipose tissue in case of oral cavity we remember only buccal fat pad which is the rich source of adipose tissue and in the animal studies there are few uh, revealing factors which they have been declared. The one is first being osteogenic and with a calcified extracellular matrix had been formed in animals and they can able to regenerate the pulp as well as periodontal ligament and they can able to regenerate the entire periodontium in an extracted tooth of an animal model. Stem cells from the salivary gland uh, the still whether it can able to regenerate the salivary gland function is still under investigation. However, the one from the stromal cells were osteogenic, chondrogenic and adipogenic as stem cells from the other parts of the oral cavity. Research were going on from the blood vessel and the parenchymal cells of the salivary gland. Then stem cells from the maxillary sinus, we know something called as nidirant membrane which is present in the maxillary sinus. So, cells from that part have an ability to form a differentiated type of cell lineages. So, they have a higher expression of mesenchymal stem cells. So, they can able to differentiate into osteoblast, adipocyte, chondrocyte with mineralized bone like deposit. So, they can be used nowadays in a conventional my axillary sinus lifting and bone grafting prior to implant. So, how do I how do we isolate an stem cell from the oral cavity? First, the tooth which is extracted has to be put it in saline or fresh milk with a frozen gel packs. Then it has to be placed in a hypotonic phosphate buffered saline solution. Then it has to be transferred to dermage in an insulated metal transport vessel then passing to passing it the teeth to the disinfectant cleaning then pulp is isolated from the pulp chamber and cultured in a mesenchymal stem cell medium. So, this is the picture where the tooth is extracted transported and in the lab it is isolated then one important feature of mesenchymal stem cell is plastic adherence and the evaluation of the markers which have been uh, positive and negative which has to be positive and negative then multi-lineage differentiation such as adipocyte, osteocyte and chondrocyte. The stem cell bank is a place where the stem cells were preserved and stored for further processing and further tissue engineering. It includes 5C. 
it has to follow this 5C, the one being concern, confidentiality, conformity, contamination free and common weal. Informed concern has to be got from the donor and he has to donate it by his own willingness. Second one is confidentiality. The donor name or any details of the donor should not be leaked to the any other external person, even the family members of the donor. The third one is conformity. This whole self, the whole process, stem cell banking, processing and culturing, everything has to be evaluated by the qualified person. That is, they must know about the ent entire thing about the stem cell processing, starting from the culture media, storage, and uh, contamination and the equipments used for the uh, processing of the stem cell, everything has to be known by that qualified person to qualify the stem cell which is entering their bank. The fourth one being contamination free which is very important. The stem cell has to be maintained, uh, maintained the sterile environment and it should be free of contamination from cell lineages and other bacterial contamination. Infection from mycoplasma has to be evaluated now and then. The last one being common will that is the donor should not be paid for his donation. That is most important which is followed in many countries. So, those stem cells have most of the uh, advantages, there are few disadvantages, the one being the transportation. Transportation of stem cells is really very critical. The second one is high chances of contamination throughout the transportation or contamination of different cell lineages very common. The third one being high cost and few of them have very slow survival rate. These are my references. Thank you.